Hi everyone, welcome to Crochet Rocks. I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to make my Baby Gems blanket in this Baby Gems rainbow blanket. Um, this is a spike stitch, but I did change it um, for my own kind of purposes. So it's not, strictly speaking, a proper stitch. It's not too difficult. It's slightly more difficult than making a granny square, granny a granny stitch but not a great deal so I'm going to aim this tutorial um, to say that a beginner could do this um, honestly I do believe that if you're a beginner you could master this quite easily so this blanket I have used um, a three weight double knit double knitting yarn so I have used 100 gram ball of yellow because yellow is my main colour I started with the yellow and I ended the blanket with yellow and I've done the border and that 100 gram ball um, this was what I had left so it, I used all of it so if you wanted to make sure you had two just in case for your main colour then you know you don't really want to be playing yarn chicken at the end of it so my main colour I had 100 grams and I had 8 50 gram balls in um, pastel shades so just like this one really they're all DK weights they're all quite good um, good matches for size um, you know I, I made sure that they were all very very similar because sometimes a three weight can be a lot thinner then another three weight yarn which you know I feel like it shouldn't be but that can always happen so I used eight 50 gram balls of colour and then I have this which is what I made my border with and I achieved this look which I really love I've done this before with a bright coloured variegated yarn but this time I used this pastel one and I have used this yarn before it's the paint box by Robin and um, before the, the pandemic, they did sort of, or during the pandemic, they did go under. But somebody has resurrected them. But I'm not sure you can get this colour anymore. But what you need is a variegated yarn where the colour changes are quite rapid. Um, so if you see, you get about a stitch to a stitch and a half out of each colour. And it changes quite rapidly. Now, as I say, somebody has brought Robin back from Oblivion. And they do have a really lovely pink um, colour. They also have a, a turquoise, which I do have some. But it's all packed away in cellophane. But I can show you this one. Just bear with me one second. This is the newer colour, which would work just as well if your main colour was the pink. I do have other colours on, on the websites. I think I want to say it was um, Lovecrafts that I got it from. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, any variegated, pretty pastel or if you're using bright colours, any bright one would do. And it's it's lovely border. I've used it before and I really liked it. So... Um, what I particularly like about this is the way I have adapted this spike so that it fans out a little better and closes up the gap. So it's a little fatter at the top and it creates like these diamonds. And I really like that, the fact that it goes into these kind of diamonds. So I'm going to show you how I did it and I'm going to just move this out of the way. Um... Now this stitch is multiples of four. Um, I've used a 4.5 millimetre crochet hook and if you want to you can use a five just to do the chain just to make sure that it will be wide enough and it won't bunch. This is just a hook I got free in a magazine. It's a Bella Coco hook that I got free in a magazine. So I'm going to do for my blanket, um, it took 120 chain and it measured 28 inches by 42 because it's quite a large one. I wanted it to fit on a child's cot. So if you wanted to make it smaller, 
maybe for um, a stroller or a car seat, um, then just remember it's multiples of four and you can adjust it. Likewise, if you wanted to make it bigger for a nice bed size, just make it bigger with multiples of four. But obviously, you will have to judge the yarn for yourself in that respect. Um, but for this blanket, I did 10 rows before I changed colour. And 10 rows um, gave me a nice bit left over of a, of a 50 gram ball. But it was just, it wasn't tight. Um, unless you uh, you crochet much more loose than I do, you will have a, a nice little bit left over from the 50 gram. But you you really will need maybe 50 grams. So I did a couple of swatches as well to show you what it's like in one colour because when I first started doing it, I loved it in lemon and I didn't really want to make the rainbow. I thought I was kind of in two minds whether to keep it all just one colour and do the lemon. Um, that particular lemon yarn was um, a King Cole, a new one, I think, and it was really lovely and soft and f and drapey and I loved the way it was working up. This one's kind of sturdy, but this is what it looks like with just white. And um, I also did it with a variegated yarn, but this one, I just picked this up in a, in a really cheap store. This is from a store in the UK called B&M and it's just a, a nice inexpensive store they're two pound fifty per ball and it's got this is that marbled kind of yarn where it's got white in with the color and it's got light blues and a little bit darker blues and when it works up it has this stripe in a little bit of banding and, I, and these white peaks kind of look nice because of the the colors that are woven together but that's what it looks like with variegated that's what it looks like with just plain white um, so I just wanted to show that to you. So we're going to make a swatch for this blanket today. Um, like I said, if you're making the blanket, you want 120 chain. But I'm just going to do a little swatch with you um, just to show you how it's done, how we change colour and, and everything. So I'm going to do um, start with pink and end with pink. Make this little square swatch and I will show you how to do the border at the end of it. So... You just need to make a slip knot, and I was taught this way, just make a loop, put the yarn behind it and through, just pull it, and you've got yourself a slip knot. Nice and easy. Insert the hook. I'm going to use the five. I, I don't need to do that, but I think it's a nice little trick if you don't want your chain to be tight and you're not very good at ga gauging it. Um, so I'm going to do a chain of 32 for this swatch. So for a chain, we just yarn over and pull through the loop that's on the hook. Simple as that. So yarn over and pull through the loop that's on the hook. And that's how we chain. So I'm going to do 32 of them and I'm going to pause the video because if I'm counting, it can really put you off. So uh, I'm just going to pause it and I'll, I'll catch up with you again when I've got the rest. I've got the other 30. So I've got my 32, I'm just going to take that hook out and put my 4.5 millimetre hook. So all of my yarns are three weight or DK and I'm using a 4.5 millimetre hook. You'll also need darning needles and a pair of scissors. Doesn't make a great deal of ends for sewing in, which isn't too bad. That's a project that I like. So with this, we are going to go into the fourth chain from hook. So this loop doesn't count. We've got one, two, three, four. So we're going to go into this one. We're going to yarn over and put our hook through that chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So we have three on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Now in the UK, that's called a treble crochet, but in the US it's a double. So we're going to do two more in that same chain just like we're doing a regular granny stitch for this row. Okay, so we're going to skip three. So we're going to go one, two, three, and go in the fourth, and we're going to do three more. Okay. 
and we're going to do that all the way to the end. I'll hold that in my finger just to show you. We're going to skip one, two, three, go into this one. We're going to do another three. It may seem like a big long gap, but we need that gap. One, two, three, into the fourth, and we're going to do three. Whoops. Took too many out there. And we're just going to do that to the end. Pull out some more yarn. So I'm going to pause it because you're going to be a bit bored watching me go all the way to the end. So I will come back to you when I've got my remaining four chain left. Okay, so this is where, how it's looking. And we've got four chain remaining. We're going to skip our three and in our last one we're going to do two UK trebles or US double crochet in that same one. Just two. And that's the end of our first first row. Now obviously you'll have a lot more than this if you're doing the whole blanket. So now I'm going to chain two, turn my work and we're now going to work in between these clusters. And we're going to do this slightly differently. So I wanted, as I said, a nice fat stitch for this top so that it closed it in nicely. So I adapted a spike stitch. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So we're going to work in here. and We're going to do one UK treble or US double crochet. And now we're going to yarn over twice. And we're going to look to the bottom. We've got one, two, three chains. You want that middle one. So we're just going to go in there, yarn over and pull up a loop, pull it up a little way. And we're going to yarn over, pull through two. We've got three on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Now normally when you're doing a UK double treble where you yarn over twice, or that's called a treble crochet in the US, you'll go through two, through two, and through two. But I didn't want that. I wanted the same length of stitch. I didn't want a long, lanky stitch, and I didn't re and I wanted it to be nice and chubby at the end. So I finished it as if I was doing a half treble, which is a half double in the US. So now we're going to do our last, because we're obviously we're working in threes. We've got our first stitch, that's our second. So if you look, down the side of this one here, that's our space. So you just do your last UK treble, US double in there. And that's what we're going to do in every one along. So we're going to do our first one, like a normal granny. Yarn over twice. Go into that middle chain of those three at the bottom and pull up a little way. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through all three. So there you can see the side of this stitch is the gap. And we're just going to finish off. We're going to do that all the way along. Now it doesn't look particularly closed in yet until we get to the next row. But it will. I'll stay with you because it is a different stitch. Pull up a little way through two, through three, and then finish off with our third. I'm just gonna pull some more yarn. Okay, so that's we're gonna do that in every single one of these spaces. And it does kind of pull up, make that you can easily see where you've got to go in. There's one, two, three. So we're going in the second one, always the center one. Um, it does kind of, I'll show you when I finish this one, whoops, knock the camera, let's move it back. It does kind of make this one a little squatty, if you see what I mean, but it does even out. 
Don't worry if it's looking bunched up. It's fine. Into the centre one. Pull up the loop a little way each time. Almost at the end. Don't want to pull up too far. I know sometimes when you're doing a mosaic, you need to pull up quite a bit, but not with this one. Just a little way. Okay, so we're at the end. Now what we need to do is find our top chain, which is here. There's our bottom one, there's our top. So we're going to just do two, like we did at the other end, we're going to do two in that one. Just two regular UK trebles or US double crochets. Chain two and turn it. So that's what it's looking like now. And it still doesn't look like the diamonds pattern. It still doesn't look right yet, but it will start to now. So we're going to do, that's how we repeat. This row here is our repeat for the rest of the blanket. Okay, so I'm only going to do four rows in the pink um, and then I'll change colour to show you. But for the blanket, I did 10 rows and you will see as we go on, it becomes a little difficult to find or to count your rows and it can you can easily get one too many. But there are ways around it and I'll show you that in a moment. So we're going to carry on with um, our repeat row and in this one obviously we're not going in the chain we're going in the middle stitch and for some it's nice and obvious because it has this slightly larger V at the top which is quite good because you know you get to see it quite easily and you can see you've got to go in next to that previous cluster to finish it off so you can always see where it is you have to go. There it is, nice big V. Put it up a little way. So there you go, there's our, our previous one. You get to see it quite clearly after a while where you've got to go. So that's all we're doing. You can see now we're getting the Vs, the nice kind of diamond shapes. So I'm going to do that in every single one of our gaps until I get to this one and I will um, come back to you. Okay, so I'm up the end again, and I just wanted to show you um, once more, we're going into the top of our chain. There's our first, there's our second, so our stitches go into this chain here. We're gonna just do our two. I did try this with one at the end, but because of this, it, we do need two, it just otherwise it pulls it too much and um, to straighten it up we need to. So there we are. Now I said I'd show you. It can be difficult to count your rows because the first they do kind of go like half rows if you like. So there's one, two and it goes three, four. So it can be difficult to see them but if you get the first row and it looks like See, there's the reverse of the stitch. You can always see the back of a stitch. So as long as your first row that you're looking at is this way round, you can see one, two, three. So next row is my fourth, fourth row. So I'm going to do four rows and change colour. So I'm going to change two, uh, chain two, not change, chain, and I'm going to do one more row with the pink. I will end with the pink so that I kind of show you um, how I did with my with my blanket, although it was lemon, not pink. But as you could see, I used rather a lot of that. It's not enough to work with now. So I'm going to just repeat that last row again all the way along. So I'll pause the video and um, I will come back to you when I get to the end and I'll show you how we change our colour. 
Okay, so I've gone all the way along and I've done one in my top chain. I'm going to do my second, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm just going to go through two. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave a nice long tail for sewing in and just move the pink out of the way. We'll come back to the pink a little while later. And so the next colour I'm going to do is this blue. So I'm just going to hold that behind and this yarn so that I've got them nice and the tension's nice and tight. I'm just going to finish that stitch. I'm going to do a chain and cinch it right down. Now this is just how I always change colour. So you don't have to do this, but for extra security, I always like to just do a little knot. I know some people hate that, but I don't want it coming undone ever. So when I'm working, I now work this colour in. So I've only ever got one tail to um, work in. But it's very confusing to look at the way that I weave an end in. So I won't show you that. I'll just let it dangle. We'll just... You can sew that in however you would like. But obviously when I come to do the border, this one would have been uh, worked in. All I need to do is incorporate that one when I'm bringing up the, the border. So there was a very, very little sewing and, and you know, sewing in events. So that's as easy as that to change the colour. So all I do now is my two chain to turn and do exactly the same as I did before with my new colour. Exactly. It's a just a one row repeat pattern. Nice and simple, very easy to do and watch TV, which is what I like about it. And I also like the fact that there are very, very few holes. It's a nice warm pattern. And I wanted, as I say, to get that top part a bit fuller to even that out. I didn't really want a long, lanky stitch. I wanted it to look nice. So you do get this kind of uneven um, colour change, you know, where it goes, because it is a spike stitch, um, so it does come down into the next row, but then when you come back, it takes it to here, so it isn't too much of a, a drastic kind of change, if you know what I mean. You, you just get half a row in the end. So I like it anyway. I like the way it looks when, when you change colour and um, I like everything about it. So I'm going to carry on and do my clusters and I'm going to do another four rows. So you can see what I mean when you're, when you're counting your rows. It's one, two, three, four. Now this is five. So that's you do have to have a little bit of your wits about you when you're doing the the rainbow and making sure you've got your your ten rows. I mean obviously you can adapt it. You can do you can do smaller, you can do your four rows. It really doesn't matter. As long as you make sure you have enough yarn of any colour that you need. So I'm gonna pause it then and um I'm going to um, just carry on with this blue and uh, nearly picked up a bit of pink there. So I'm just going near the end. I'll come, I'll just stay until the end and um, then I will pause it and just do my four rows with this colour and change to another. So I'm at the end. There's my first chain. There's my second. And I do my two in there. And we're ready to turn. And so once we turn our work, we'll just show you how that looks. Um, with the colour changed and, you know, the second row. There we go. It's easier to see sometimes than others where to go in. Usually there's a nice big V, so you can't miss it. just get to the end of this row 
and we'll see the difference with the uh, colour change. Okay, so I'm going to pause it then and I will catch up with you when I get to the end of this row and uh, look at the uh, the difference in the colour change. Okay, so there we are. It kind of stops it from being such a a big drop, I think, when it goes into this part as well. So that's um, how we're changing colour. Um, I'm going to do another two rows in the blue and I'll come back to you and we'll swap to another colour. Okay, so now I've got to the end. I'm going to change colour this time to a peachy colour. Bring my new colour in. I got a little bit baggy that one, so I'm just going to pull it a little bit. Bring my new colour. And cinch it down. So I'm just going to tie that one off. And now I'm going to do four rows in this colour. And now you've seen how to do it and how to change colour. I'm just going to pause it now until I've got a nice square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end on the same colour. So it'll be pink. And then we'll do the border in pink just to show you how I've done it. But if you if you can see now with the blue, it's a little bit more prominent colour. You can see you can count your rows this way. It's easier to see with the blue. OK, so I'm going to pause it and I will come back to you once I've completed a square of my swatch and I will show you how to do the rest. OK, so I've done my four rows of different colours and I finished on the pink row the same as I ended off so I'm now ready to do the border. So first thing we have to do is work our way back along here and make this um, this row without the you know make it so that we don't have the hole. So all we do is we, this is our corner stitch so I'm going to do a chain and cinch it down. I always do that when I'm doing a corner. Now I'm going to do two UK double crochets in this stitch, which in the US is a single crochet. So we just insert our hook into that space, yarn over and pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through both. And we're going to do one more in that same stitch. Now in the corner, we will have three. Three stitches will always be the corner. But I like to finish my round because we're now working all the way around this um, this swatch, which would be the blanket. Um, and I like to finish with my yarn dead centre of that particular corner. And this is how we do it. We'll just do two for now. We'll go all the way around and we'll finish off putting the third one back in there. So now... We're going to yarn over twice and do our um, our long stitch. Exactly the same as before. And now we're going to just do a UK double or US single in that one and this one. And now we're back at this gap. And we're doing that again. And I know it looks like the stitch count shouldn't work out, but it does when you get to the end. It's not pulling, it's just right. And that's all we do all the way along to the end. And that one just pulls that 
so that it's nice and straight and it closes that gap. So we're going to carry on and do that all the way along until we get to the corner. So I'm going to pause it and I shall catch up with you when we get there. Okay, so I've worked my way all the way to the end and now here is our two chain. So in the top one of our two chain, where we've always gone into, I'm going to put in three um, UK double crochets or US single crochets and that turns the corner for us. We're now going to be working along this edge. And all we're going to do is pick up a stitch at the correct interval. So we're going to go into here. We don't want too many or it will pucker. So it just judged the width of the stitch and so I'm going to go into here. I'll try and go in to two two stitches each time. So so that I'm definitely going through a nice chunk of a stitch. And so I go into this one. But what I don't want to do is do this. So I split the whole stitch. I want to go in between it. So I've gone into two loops there. So that's what we're doing and we want to keep it so that it's nice and even that when we're not pulling our stitches too far apart and equally we haven't got too many that are bunching up. So now we're going to do it along the next colour. Need to pull out some yarn. So just try and space them out. You can see, once you kind of have a look at it, you can see where you need to place your hook. So just do that until we get to the next corner. All the way along. So I'm going to pause it and I will meet up with you at the next corner. Just a quick one. I counted how many stitches I made it along each colour and they are six. So I'm going to just make sure that I try and keep to that count and then they'll all be um, a night's width apart. So I just thought I'd let I just sort of mention that. OK, so I've gone all the way along and it's worked out for my little swatch that I had six in between each of the colours. So the next one would be my sixth one at the corner. Obviously, if you've got 10 rows, it'd be an awful lot more for yourselves. But this is just a, a way of spacing it so that you make sure you get the same each time. So I'm now going into the corner and I'm going to do my three stitches in the corner. Now I'm going along the bottom edge and it does look a little strange along this bottom edge so you just kind of go in between and I'm going to work over the tails now when I encounter them. So some of these are where you've gone into them on the previous row with um, three stitches they're a bit elongated but that's fine so just pick up your stitches along here try to make them nice and spaced out don't put too many in you want to try and keep it um, nice and flat and even but it's easy to pick them up along this edge it's more these edges that are difficult and of course this edge is where all the tails are which you can either sew in um, before you do it or work them in as I'm going to for this, on the purposes of this one. Um, or you could have like worked them in as you go. It just depends on what you've done. So I'm going to go all the way around now, do three in this corner, and I'll catch up with you when I get back to the start. I'm just going to pick up six along each of these. Obviously, yours will be a different width. And um, I'll see you when we get back to the start. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. I've got rid of all of those tails. So now I'm back at the start and there are the two that I did in that corner. So I'm going to do my third one. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next one. So the middle 
really, of the three. And that puts us slap bang in the middle of the corner. So I'm going to do my chain and cinch it down. And now I'm going to do two again in this very same stitch. And when I've gone all the way around, I will finish that one off again and be finishing in the center of that corner. So now I'm going to go in every single one of the stitches that I've picked up all the way around. I'm going to put three in the corner stitch and I'm going to do four rounds of um, UK double crochet or US single crochet. So it's much easier now. You've picked up all of your stitches and it's just going to be a nice kind of inch wide border. Um, four rows is, is perfect for the blanket. It may look a little bit big on a little swatch like this but four rows on the blanket is actually quite nice if i get get the blanket back and um, i can show you on one of the colored sections rather than the yellow you can see it's nice and it's a nice width that's the the four four rows but it's not obviously not the end of the the border there will be another row so that's all I'm going to do now is one stitch in every single one all the way around and three when I get to the corners and I'm going to do that for another uh, three rows or rounds including this one so I'll stay with you until we get to the next corner and I'll show you um, show you that going around the corner bear with me a second just pulling out some yarn okay so just one in each until the end I'm going as slow as I can but if I um, do go ahead of you then just by all means pause the video and catch up with me I try to remember to slow down when I'm doing a tutorial. Did I go in the stitch there? There we go. Okay, so we're coming up for the corner. Sometimes it's difficult to see which is your corner. Other times it's nice and obvious. So here we are, we're at the corners. We're going to do three in this next one. Just to turn that corner. Okay, and then one in every stitch along this edge. And then we'll get to this corner, do our three, and we'll go back on ourselves. Um, some of my ends just need a little tidy up there. Um, but that's fine, so I'm going to pause it, finish this round and do two more, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm almost there at the end. Got a couple more to do that one and where's my corner corner stitch here we are seems like a big jump where are we there it is to do my last one and slip stitch into that middle one but I'm going to use my new yarn to bring the yarn through you can just end off with this color and pick up again with the next if you want to but I'm going to just change my yarn during my last stitch. So I'm going to bring in my variegated yarn. Just pulling out some yarn. Bear with me a sec. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to that as I did before when I was changing colour. Bring my new colour through and do my one chain and cinch it down. And now I'm just going to secure that at the back with a little knot. And I have to apologize because there is one subscriber, I think it's just the one, who hates me doing that. I don't like it though. Right, so now, this does look really, really effective, but it is extremely simple. And what we're going to do in this corner 
and I'm going to work over these tails at the same time, is we're going to yarn over, sorry, we're going to do a half treble or a half double in the US. So we're yarning over, we're going back into that same place that we have just slip stitched into. We're going to yarn over and we're going to pull up our loop. So we've got three loops on our hook. And this time we yarn over and we pull through all three and then we're going to do another one exactly the same in that same space so that's two remember we're going all the way around and our third one will be back in there to finish off our corner so now we're just going to do a half treble a half double if you're on the other side of the pond in each stitch along and i'm going over the tail as i go and that is it as simple as it gets but it does look beautiful. It does look really unusual. And I did this, as I say, with bright coloured yarn. The one that I got from Poundland. So you get um, three balls, 150 grams for two pounds. And um, I finished a blanket with that and it did look really stunning. So we just go all the way around. When we get to the corner, just as usual, we do three in the corner to go around it. It's just nice and simple, but looks lovely. So I'm just gonna get rid of those now and just go in every single stitch all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to pause it and I shall, I shall meet up with you at this corner and um, we'll go round one corner together. Okay, so we're at the corner. I'm going to do three in the one stitch just to get around the corner just as we did on the previous rows with the other stitch. Just need to pull out some yarn. And then we're just going one in every stitch all the way along this edge to the next corner. And we're only going to do one round with um, this stitch, just the one round, finish it off. Okay, so I'm going to pause it then. I'm gonna go all the way around doing three in my corners and I shall meet up with you when we get back to the start. Okay, so we're almost there at the very end. Just got a couple more to do. And then a last one. And slip stitch into the next one. And then we just end off. And it's finished. So there we are. That's how we do the actual blanket and the border so this is what it looks like if you want to do it with um shorter stripes this is how it would be if you wanted to just do one color it always looks very different in white to other colors and this is the variegated and of course the original the original blanket when you have the quite wide um, strips of colour um, with 10 rows. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if, Like I said before, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be informed when there are new videos. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye for now.